Okay, welcome back to the Morning Mailbag with Coach T, where I answer your questions from the clubhouse, from our Twitter, from pretty much any way you can get a hold of us. Here at TackleTrading.com, we're trying to build one of the best teams out there, and uh, that's what requires some of your participation. Got a good one come in from Solon over the weekend. Saw this uh, in, our, in our email inbox, and I thought it was a good question to kind of bring to the video. Solon asks, managing an iron condor, he says, hey coaches, can one of you make a video on managing a volatile iron condor as to make the maximum profitability on it? I currently have one set on the rut with the 970, 80, 1260, 1270 legs. It's approaching the upward limit with plenty of time for it to revert to its mean. I think that the best way to manage this is to close the short put since it is at nearly a maximum profit and ride out the rest of the legs. Is this how I would leg out? Well, let's think about that for a minute. Let's first start with concept. So usually when you trade an iron condor it's because you believe that something has then moved into a range and is going to be a sideways stock for whatever duration that you're going to need to be in the trade to be able to build a profit. So if that underlying index or stock or whatever does move sideways the iron condor should build profit just from time passing. It's a time based trade. Now let's take a look at Solon's choice with the rut real quick and go over here to Thinkorswim. The Russell 2000, I mean, you know, when Solon had put that position on, I'm sure that it had had some resistance here and it did look like it was in a range. Now it's broken out of that resistance on some of the recent market strength. It ran about 11 points from where it broke out and then Solon has his risk up here at 12 50. Okay, now so that's part of it. So if you've never traded an iron condor, let me explain it to you a little bit and help you understand. And let's do a new. Actually, here we go. All right. Options involve either one leg or more than one leg. Now, when you do one leg, they call that a single. If you do two legs, they call it a vertical. So for example, you can do a what's called a oh, a bull put spread and a bull put spread involves where you buy a put and you sell a put as well don't worry about the rules of where you put it and all that kind of stuff that would be something you have to de define in your strategies and that's what we do in mentoring and all the classes and everything we can do more of that we're gonna do a lot more of that stuff over at tackle okay so you sell a put and you buy a put the combination of those two things is what we call a bull put and you have your reward and your risk and this is a bull put spread now what an iron condor is is a trader who then combines the bull put with I'll make these different color up here a bear call so that they can build more potential profit and a bear call spread involves where you sell a call and then you buy a call So what happens is you have these four different positions. I'm going, to, I'm going to square them all off. You own a put, you sell a put, you sell a call, and you own a call. Okay, now that spread up here is called the bear call spread. When you add those two things together, they become the iron condor. It's a pretty cool name, huh? All right, so this is an iron condor spread. That's what Solon did. And you double your reward potential, but it's now neutral, and you've got to manage both sides as well. So to really trade iron condors well, and here's a concept. Here's something that you need to understand if you're out there and you're new and you're listening to this. Sometimes putting on a more complicated position might be easier to actually deal with and manage. Because you have a bullish spread and a bearish spread on the same stock, they're inherently hedged. You're, you're hedging each other off at the same time. 
So you're taking bullish risk and bearish risk, you're combining it, it settles it in, so it's kind of smoother for you to actually manage it. Um, because you're generating time decay, it's, it's what we call a cash flow trade. I've built the spread Solon was describing over here in the Analyze tab at Thinkorswim. And once you build it, it will show you what your potential is. You also can calculate what your Greeks are. And I just assumed one contract for our virtual example here today. Now, what's interesting about this is that because Solon, your stock has gone all the way up, because we originally, this was the Russell Index, and because that stock has gone up, the bull put value, like you identified, is very little, and the bear call still has money in it. And if we even look at this, and I don't know exactly what expiration you have, but the 980, 970 is zero. Okay, independently, the vertical is literally worth nothing. Um, but the call side, this is where you got to learn how to manage this stuff, guys. The 1260 and 1270 still has 20 cents credit in it for those four day options. So, what can we do? Well, if this one's worth nothing, it means you've made your full profit. So, there's no reason to be in those legs. But if you try to fill it as a vertical, you're not going to get filled. And the reason is the 960 has a zero bid price and the 970 has a zero bid price. So what you do is you take the one, you, or I guess it's 980. So what you do is you take the one you sold and you offer a nickel. That's what you offer. If you want to get out of that leg, you offer a nickel. And then what you then do is you take the one you own and you try to get it filled for a nickel. Hopefully you can get both of them filled. You have to get the buy the one leg first and then get rid of the other leg. If we do that, look at the risk profile here, we then take that down. We're now just in a bear call spread. Okay. Remember our example. If we get rid of the bull put because it's got full profit and we eliminate it, so it's no longer in our spread. We now just simply have the bear call side. So now we're just in this side of the trade. So it's no longer an iron condor. Then it would go back to managing credit spreads. Just what do you do with your credit spread as it gets close? You know, I did a, a video on that last week, and you, you can you can put in alerts, you can put in hedges. There are different things you can do. My advice is simpler when you're new. Uh, don't make it complex. Don't do a lot of you know crazy management styles. If the trade hits a certain point that you no longer are comfortable with, you probably should just take the loss. Now that bear call credit though should be at a profit or close to it depending on what you got filled for. So we may actually w wait that one out a little bit, see how the market news comes in through the week, but we've got to have a plan. You have to have a plan. If this thing goes up to 1250 and continues to push and it gets close to your strikes, at what point are we going to cut the loss? That needs to be decided well before it ever even gets close to that so that you uh, you're just executing your plan. Okay, um, you know, it's a great question, Solon. Thanks for putting it out there, and thanks for being such an active member on our team. We really appreciate it. That's what we're trying to build here at Tackle Trading is a, a community where we can help each other and grow, and uh, you guys can learn from these videos and classes and coaches' shows and questions and everything that we're doing. Uh, until next time, this has been Coach T from TackleTrading.com. Get in the game. Get off the sidelines and take control of your financial future at www.tackletrading.com. Get in the game.